In this video, I want to show you why and how to remove a leaky supply valve or shutoff valve, whether it's a compression type valve, soldered valve or a push fit valve. And I'll show you all kinds of cool tips and tricks along the way to make it easier. And if you do learn something, don't forget to smash the like button to not get punished by the plumbing gods. Let's get started. So first off, why would you ever need to remove or replace a shutoff valve? Aren't they supposed to not be messed with? Well, the first and most obvious reason would be that it's leaking. Normally, these valves don't just leak, but when they do, they can't really be fixed. You have no choice but to swap them out. The second reason would be that you're renovating or remodeling and you want to replace it for something that looks newer and works smoother, as these valves do tend to corrode with time. And as always, whenever you're working on a plumbing circuit, take the proper precautions before by shutting off the water to the house and making sure the lines are properly drained, or you might get a little surprise. Now, onto the types of valves you might encounter in your home. There's compression type valves, soldered or sweated valves, and the less common push fit versions, which are starting to become more and more popular. Compression valves, which are the most common types of shutoff valves in my opinion, work by compressing what is called a ferrule ring in the US or olive in the UK. They're basically sandwiched between a compression nut and the valve itself to create a watertight seal. What's fun about these particular fittings is that you don't need much skill to remove them and they're quite easy to reinstall. And I'll show you the special tool needed to get it done which is really neat. The second type, which are less common nowadays, are soldered or sweated valves. These work like any other soldered fitting. They're soldered on and to remove them, they need to be unsoldered. And the final type, which are push fits like this, are the easiest to replace, but they can be finicky to remove if they're close to the escutcheon plate. So let's go through these one at a time. First off, Compression valves. The first thing to do before anything is to disconnect the supply line on the valve. Then, you want to remove the valve by holding the body with one wrench and undoing the nut with another. Seeing we're keeping the pipe, we'll need to remove the compressed ferrule ring for this to work, and this is where this little gadget comes into play. This tool, which is essentially a puller, attaches to the nut and pulls both the nut and ring off the pipe. And I hear some of you asking, why not keep them on and just install a new valve with the old nut and ring? The reason being for this is that the ring formed onto the old valve might have a slightly different face profile than the new valve. So I always prefer replacing all the parts, just to be sure. Something I like to do with these is I like oiling the threads on the puller to keep them from wearing down prematurely. This really helps at keeping the tool working properly for a long time, especially if you do this type of job often. These gadgets are inexpensive. They only cost about $15 and could be bought on Amazon or at your local hardware store. I'll leave a link to these in the description box below. To use it is quite simple. You just push it against the face of the pipe, thread the nut on, and turn the handle. This will slowly pull both of them off really easily without damaging the stub out. To reinstall one, make sure your escutcheon plate is on, put the nut on, the ring, and make sure you're applying a light pressure on the front of the valve to make sure it's fully seated while you first tighten it. Then, use two wrenches to send it home. I always prefer under tightening these, and if they do drip, I just tighten them a quarter turn, as they can be damaged if over tightened. So that's it for a compression valve, but what if you have a soldered or sweated valve like this? How do you go about it? The first thing I would do would be to check if there's enough pipe left after cutting off the old one. This would obviously be the best scenario as you wouldn't need to unsolder the old one, you just cut it off. If you're replacing the drywall, there's no real need for any flame protection. But if you aren't, you might want to get yourself one of these protective blankets to prevent making any char marks on the wall. 
The first thing I do is open the valve. This will allow for any water inside the pipe to boil off and evaporate if needed, or it'll be almost impossible to unsolder it. Then, grab it with a pair of locking pliers and rotate and wiggle it off as you're heating it. A cool trick here while the solder is still hot and in a liquid form is to quickly wipe it off with a rag so it doesn't harden. This will really speed up the process of getting the pipe clean and ready for later resoldering. Once all of your work is done and you're ready to install your valve, the first thing you'll want to do is to prep the surface of the pipe. To do this, you could use sandpaper and sand most of the old solder off, or use one of these. These make a real quick job for this kind of thing. Now it's the time to slip the escutcheon plate on, flux the pipe, and start soldering. If you're scared of burning the chrome plate, just grab some aluminum paper, fold it in four, and make two slits with an exacto like this. You'll be able to easily remove it once it's soldered. And if soldering is new to you, just watch this playlist here. And remember, always test your solders by turning the water on and checking for leaks once you're done. Finally, push fit fittings. Removing these can be quite a challenge since they're really close to the chrome plate and the removal tool won't fit. So here's a few ways to get her done. First would be to use a PEX Go no-go gauge like this. They're slim and they'll do half inch and three quarter inch for other types of fittings. Second would be a bicycle wrench. These come in kits or individually and make it super easy to remove them. And finally, two flathead screwdrivers. You would slowly pry it on each side and it would eventually back off. Now, as you could see, my escutcheon plate is pretty damaged from removing the fitting, so now's a good time to replace it. To reinstall it, you'd mark the proper penetration by using this chart right here, or a dedicated depth gauge like this. And you'd want to make sure the pipe doesn't go in as you're doing this, or you won't have the proper penetration. And you're done. I suggest you watch my complete guide on these fittings first to better understand how they work. I'll leave a link in the description box below to this video. And that's it! That's how you remove a shutoff valve, whether it's a compression type valve, sweat it on, or a push fit. I hope this video helped you with your project, and if it did, please like the video and share it with your friends. And until the next one, thanks for watching.